Good morning and welcome to Bible in a Year. As today we are on day 296. Today we are going through our optional readings. Uh, 1 Maccabees 15 and Sirach chapters 36 to 37. The reason we're in optional readings is because these are the books of the deuterocanonical books, the apocrypha books, uh, the secondary canon. Uh, so today we're going through 1 Maccabees chapter 15. Um, which in the first book of Maccabees, we see that Judas and Jonathan are great fighters, while Simon is a true leader. In the second book of Maccabees, we'll hear the story again about the focus shift to how the people choose to be faithful to the Lord or unfaithful to him. And in Sirach chapters 36 and 37, we have an opportunity to accumulate wisdom and gain God's perspective as we choose the next step in our lives. In Sirach chapter 37, revisits true friendship and notes how hurtful it is when a friend becomes our enemy. We are reminded to be cautious about the people for whom we seek counsel. We should not seek counsel for one who does not know what we are dealing with or who may have a bias. Instead, we should stay constant with a godly man who is interested in our success. It is valuable to know our hearts, to understand its wounds and inclinations. By knowing our heart, we can be on guard against certain weaknesses and be led towards the Lord. In Sirach, we are reminded to pray to the Lord for direction. So let's jump into it. Starting in First Maccabees chapter 15. Antiochus, son of King Demetrius, sent a letter from the islands of the sea to Simon, the priest and ethnarch of the Jews, and to all the nations. Its contents were as follows. King Antiochus, to Simon the high priest, and ethnarch, to the nations of the Jews, greetings. Whereas certain scoundrels have gained control of the kingdom of our ancestors, and I intend to lay claim to the kingdom, so that I may restore it to its formerly what it formerly was, and have recruited a host of mercenary troops, and have equipped warships, and intend to make a landing in the country, so that I might proceed against those who have destroyed our country, and those who have devastated many cities in my kingdom. Now therefore I confirm to you all the tax remissions that the king before me have granted you, and a release from all the other payments from which they have released you. I permit you to mint your own coinage as money for your country, and I grant freedom to Jerusalem in the sanctuary. All the weapons you have prepared and the strongholds that you have built and now hold shall remain yours. Every debt you owe to the royal treasuries and any such future debts shall be cancelled for you from henceforth and for all time. When we gain control of our kingdom, we will bestow great honor on you and your nation and the temple so that your glory will be manifest in all the earth. In the 174th year, Antiochus set out and invaded the land of his ancestors. All the troops rallied to him so that there were only a few with Trypho. Antiochus pursued him and Trypho came to in his flight to Dor, which is by the sea. For he knew that trouble uh, had converged on him, and his troops had deserted him. So Antiochus encamped against Dor, and with him were 120,000 warriors and 8,000 cavalry. He surrounded the town, and the ships joined battle from the sea. He pressed the town hard from land and sea, and permitted no one to leave or enter it. Then Numinus... Numenius and his companions arrived from Rome with letters to the kings and countries in which the following was written. Lucius, council of the Romans, to King Ptolemy, greetings. The envoy of the Jews have come to us as our friends and allies to renew our ancient friendship and alliance. They have been sent by the high priest Simon and by the Jewish people and have brought a gold shield weighing 1,000 minas. We therefore have decided to write to the kings and countries that they should not seek their harm or make war against them and their cities and their countries or make alliance with those who war against them. And it has seemed good to us to accept the shield from them. Therefore, if any scoundrels have fled to you from their country, hand them over to the high priest Simon so that he may punish them according to their law. Council wrote the same thing to King Demetrius, and Attalus, and Erechtheus, and Arsaces, 
and to all the countries, and to Samus, and to the Spartans, and to Delos, and to Mindos, and to, S to Sion, and to Caria, and to Samos, and to Pamphylia, and Lycia, and Helicarnassus, and to Rhodes, and Phasilus, and to Cos, and to Side, and to Eridus, and to Gortina, and to Sinaitis, and Cyprus, and Cyrene. They also sent a copy of these things to the high priest Simon. King Antiochus besieged Dor for the second time, continually throwing his forces against it and making engines of war. And he shut Trypho up and kept him from going out or in. And Simon sent to Antiochus 2,000 picked troops to fight for him, silver and gold and large amounts of military equipment. But he refused to receive them and broke all the agreements he formerly had made with Simon and became a strange from him he sent to him athenobius one of his friends to confer with him saying you hold control of joppa and gazara and of the citadels in jerusalem they are cities of my kingdom you have devastated these territories you have done great damage in the land and you have taken possession of many places in my kingdom now then hand over the cities that you have seized and the tribute money in the places that you have conquered outside the borders of Judea, or else pay me five hundred talents of silver for the destruction that you have caused, and five hundred talents more for the tribute money of the cities, otherwise we will come and make war on you. So Athenobius, the king's friend, came to Jerusalem, and when he saw the splendor of Simon and the sideboard with its gold and silver plate, and its great magnificence, he was amazed. When he reported to him the king's message, Simon said to him in reply, We have neither taken foreign land nor seized foreign property, but only inheritance of our ancestors, which one at one time have been unjustly taken by our enemies. Now that we have the opportunity, we are firmly holding the inheritance of our ancestors. As for Joppa and Gezerah, which you demand, they were causing great damage amongst the people into our land. For them we will give you one hundred talents. Athenobius did not answer him a word, but returned in wrath to the king and reported to him these words, and also the splendor of Simon and all that he had seen. And the king was very angry. Meanwhile, Trypho embarked on a ship and escaped to Orthosia. Then the king made <clears throat> Sendembius commander-in-chief of the coastal country, and gave him troops of infantry and cavalry. He commanded him to encamp against Judea, to build up Kedron, and fortify its gates, and to make war on the people. But the king pursued Trypho. So Sendebius came to Jamnia, and began to provoke the people, and invaded Judea, and take the people captive and kill them. He built up Kedron, and stationed horsemen and troops there, so that they might go out and make raids along the highway of Judea, as the king had ordered him. Here ends our first reading. Our second reading comes from Sirach, chapters 36 and 37. Have mercy upon us, O God of all, and put all the nations in fear of you. Lift up your hand against foreign nations, and let them see your might, as you have used, as you, as you, Use us to show your holiness to them, so use them to show your glory to us. Then you will know, as we have known, that there is no God but you, O Lord. Give new signs and work other wonders. Make your hand and right arm glorious. Rouse your anger and pour out your wrath. Destroy the adversary and wipe out the enemy. Hasten the day and remember the appointed time and let people recount your mighty deeds. Let survivors be consumed in the fiery wrath. And may those who harm your people meet destruction. Crush the heads of hostile rulers who say, There is no one but ourselves. Gather all the tribes of Jacob and give them their inheritance as at the beginning. Have mercy, O Lord, on the people called by your name, on Israel, whom you have named your firstborn. Have pity on the city of your sanctuary, Jerusalem, the place of your dwelling. 
Fill Zion with your majesty and your temple with your glory. Bear witness to those whom you created in the beginning and fulfill the prophecies spoken in your name. Reward those who wait for you and let your prophets be found trustworthy. Hear, O Lord, the prayers of your servants according to your good will towards your people. And all who are on the earth will know that you are the Lord, the God of the ages. The stomach will take any food, yet one food is better than another. As the palate tastes the kinds of game, so an intelligent mind detects false words. A perverse mind will cause grief, but a person with experience will pay him back. A woman will accept any man as a husband, but one girl is preferable to another. A woman's beauty lights up a man's face, and there is nothing he desires more. If kindness and humility mark her speech, her husband is more fortunate than others. He who acquires a wife gets his best possession, a helper fit for him, and a pillar of support. Where there is no fence, the property will be plundered, and where there is no wife, a man will become a fugitive and a wanderer. For who will trust a nimble robber that skips from city to city? So who will trust a man that has no nest, but lodges wherever night overtakes him? Chapter 37 Every friend says, I too am a friend, but some friends are friends only in name. Is it not a sorrow like that for death itself when a dear friend turns into an enemy? O oh, inclination to evil, why were you formed to cover the land with deceit? Some companions rejoice in the happiness of a friend, but in times of trouble they are against him. Some companions help a friend for their stomach's sake, yet in battle they will carry his shield. Do not forget a friend during the battle, and do not be unmindful of him when you distribute your spoils. All counselors praise the counsel they give. But some give counsel in their own interest. Be wary of a counselor and learn first what is his interest, for he will take thought for himself and tell you your way is good, and then stand aside to see what happens to you. Do not consult the one who regards you with suspicion. Hide your intentions from those who are jealous of you. Do not consult with a woman about her rival or with a coward about war with a merchant about business, or with a buyer about selling, with a miser about generosity, or with a merciless about kindness, with an idler about any work, or with a seasonal laborer about completing his work, with a lazy servant about a big task, pay no attention to any advice they give, but associate with a godly person whom you know to be a keeper of the commandments who is like-minded with yourself, and who will grieve with you if you fail. And heed the counsel of your own heart, for no one is more faithful to you than it, than it is. For our own mind sometimes keeps us better informed than seven sentinels sitting high on a watchtower. But above all, pray to the Most High, that he may direct your way in truth. Discussion is the beginning of every work, and counsel precedes every undertaking. The mind is the root of all conduct. It sprouts four branches, good and evil, life and death. And it is the tongue that continually rules them. Some people may be clever enough to teach many, and yet be useless to themselves. A skillful speaker may be hated. He will be destitute of all food. For the Lord has withheld the gift of charm, since he is lacking in all wisdom. If a person is wise to his own advantage, the fruits of his good sense will be praiseworthy. A wise person instructs his own people, and the fruits of his good sense will endure. A wise person will have praise heaped upon him, and all who see him will call him happy. The days of a person's life are numbered, but the days of Israel are without number. One who is wise amongst his people will inherit honor and his name will live forever. My child, test yourself while you live. See what is bad for you, and do not give in to it. For not everything is good for everyone, 
and no one enjoys everything. Do not be greedy for every delicacy. Do not eat without restraint, for overeating brings sickness and gluttony leads to nausea. Many have died of gluttony, but the one who guards against it prolongs his life. Here ends our reading. So there's many good words of wisdom here, um, instructing us to, as God's people to stay away from these ungodly virtues, um, but to be wise and instruct uh, in the ways of God, to heed the counsel um, of the Most High. Therefore, he will direct your ways in truth. Uh, to not find counsel in just anyone, but be very choosy about the counsel in which you will take. Um, and then 36 talks about uh, a good wife, a good woman, and one that is perverse, and to not follow that, a woman that is perverse. Um, as it says, a perverse mind will cause grief, but a person with experience will pay him back. Um, but we should long after finding somebody uh, as, as, as a man or as a husband, um, as it says in verse 28 of 36, if kindness and humility mark her speech, her husband is more fortunate than other men. So we should seek after women that are kind and humble, for these are markers of those who walk in the ways of God. Um, and that um, we should always look to, to God, for as it says in verse 5, then you will know as we have known that there is no God but you, O Lord. Um, we, have fall, we are to fall after the one God, uh, the God of Abraham, of Isaac, and Jacob, the God of Moses, uh, the God of the prophets, and the God that came in the flesh uh, to live among us, Jesus Christ. And it's in him that we put our trust. May we always trust in him. May we always lift up our words of praise to him uh, through prayer. So let us pray. Father in heaven, we give you praise. Thank you so much again for your word. Thank you for Jesus Christ, the Son of God, the word made flesh, that dwell among us, and that as he dwell among us, he um, later promised that he would send us his spirit. Help us to live by the spirit. Help us to listen to your word, to help us be formed by your words. Help us to live by what we hear. Help us to do your will in everything we do. Thank you, God, in your name. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Thank you for joining me today as we journey through the Bible in a year, this day 296. Um, may you rally together uh, like the Maccabees rallied uh, by Simon, that you might not be led astray by um, smooth words or... or um, leaders that promise you the moon, uh, but that you seek those who uh, bring wisdom uh, and godliness, uh, as we see in Sirach chapter 36 and 37, that what's most valuable is that we have a heart like God, uh, that we are not led towards our weakness, our fleshly desires, but we're reminded to pray to the Lord for direction and that he might lead us in ways of truth and that truth may be the belt, the thing that we wrap around the center of our being in order that we might walk in his ways to his glory. May you have a blessed day and may, uh, may you ever rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice.